Hey, and welcome back to Do News. I'm your host, the King of Do, and it is a beautiful green day in the markets. Just going to take a quick look here before we dive into the news with a quick market update. Bitcoin up just under 3% there. Ethereum rocking and rolling up 18% right now over yesterday. And uh, NIM moving up nicely. Not surprised. Uh, a little bit of news. I'll cover that shortly. Um, but a lot of double digit gainers. Um, no triple digits that I can see, but uh, some very large rebounding happening. Market cap did get back up above 100, and uh, hopefully it can stay there. Uh, Bitcoin dominance basically at an all-time low now. Uh, not looking good for Bitcoin as we move closer to the August 1st date. Um, it's reached a ultimate low here of about 37.8, and um, it's not going to be long before you see Ethereum cross it. It's just so close right here. And um, it's kind of inevitable, and it's probably going to happen before August, just at the rate that this, this is happening here, this uh, dominance crash that is occurring. Um, I'm not quite sure what it would take for this to change direction, but it's going to take a lot of confidence, and it's going to take uh, August 1 to go absolutely smoothly. Um and uh, hopefully there's just some good decision making because I think it's going to bode well for all the markets. I think there will be a new level of confidence and we may truly see that next big wave upward um, after that point. So let's get right to it. Um, really cool news. Some preschools in New York are accepting Bitcoin and Ethereum and Litecoin for uh, tuition payments. Basically, they have a bunch of people um, that use this daycare that all got rich off Ethereum. Yeah. Um, or preschool rather, not a daycare, but basically they're just asking if they can use some of their wealth um, and they're deciding to work with them and accept that type of payment. And so that's really, really exciting uh, to see institutions and things like that starting to acknowledge the value, the true value um, of blockchain technology. So um, guys, when you see stuff like this, this stuff is the most fascinating. I was thinking today, I was like, man, I wish I could be involved with some type of project, some type of um, adoption project, uh, helping uh, cryptocurrencies get adopted by businesses and e-commerce um, so that people have more places to actually spend this stuff. Um, I think that that um, is going to be the fastest way to uh, spread the good news and um, also just kind of give people confidence in it that they may not have now as far as what can I actually do with this, um, getting it in and out of the markets, actually spending on things of value. Um, I know that that's something that bugs me. Um, I have yet in the last, whew, in, it's been months since I've seen a Bitcoin sign somewhere. So um, it's just not where I live at all. And um, it's unfortunate, but I'm looking for more opportunities. I do see some uh, Bitcoin ATM machines and things like that, but I have never actually seen a Bitcoin's uh, accepted here sign and uh, still looking for it, still looking for it. So uh, make sure you guys share that stuff with me because that's what fascinates me the most, this kind of thing. Uh, moving on, this is actually really, really big news. Daimler um, has started a pilot and a uh, nice little pilot program for blockchain and uh, essentially it's a pilot program that they've already uh, been testing and have shown to work. Uh, they're working with some other uh, companies um, investigating how they can adopt it across the entire company and let's take a look at the company. So Daimler if you're not familiar actually owns a lot of very big name car brands Mercedes being one that's probably the best known. Smart cars are pretty popular in some parts of the world. Uh, they make a lot of trucks and freight liners um, and uh, buses, vans, you name it. Um, they make it all. And um, very, very huge company in the auto industry. And essentially what they're doing is um, they've already done some piloting of smart contracts that cover um, the car's origination. Uh, it's distribution, um, loan agreements, uh, repayment, and uh, even your um, interest payments and things like that. So 
essentially um, what they're doing is they're looking for a, a blockchain solution, a single solution that is smart contract based. We don't know what blockchain that could be, but they could be looking at a lot of different ones. They could be looking at uh, uh, Ant shares, for example. They could be looking at Ethereum. Uh, we just don't, we don't know. We don't have a clue, guys. We don't have a clue. They could be working with NIM for all we know, right? But what we do know is that they've admitted that they're working with smart contracts and they want to be able to implement it in every part of their business. So we're talking about um, everything from when it's going through the factory, um, every single part potentially could be on the blockchain as far as where it came from, who put it together, the person on the, on the line who made it. That's going to save millions, if not billions, uh, potentially for companies. Uh, when there's recalls, they're going to be able to identify exactly which parts are where and get them back very quickly and ensure that it happens in a timely manner and they can meet government regulations easier and faster. And so all sorts of red tape goes away. Um, really fascinating. So then you kind of go through, you know, with the, the car, um, basically, you know, it gets assigned a VIN number and things like that, but getting that onto a blockchain essentially, and then, um, tracking where it goes. And if you're, and if you don't know, dealers trade cars a lot. It's not, um, uncommon at all for a dealer to trade cars. So, you know, when they get dropped off here in, um, overseas like mercedes for example being dropped off here in america overseas um it's just distributed to a bunch of dealers and the dealers then can trade back and forth for the for the different cars that their clients want um so being able to track all that uh and ensuring that the, the the cars are in the right place where they you know they have full clarity on the distribution and uh, full knowledge of where their cars are and where they are in the process. You know, which cars are pending a loan agreement right now, right? Um, so then moving into loan agreement, um, being actual, being, I've actually worked in car sales before and this part's really interesting to me personally. It's just when, when you go and you start signing loan documents and things, I've seen it a million times where like people come back in and the documents don't match, whether it's an error by somebody checking it or I, I don't even know. I mean, but it just happens all the time. But having having proof of your original contract on a blockchain will help remove any disputes. Um, both of you digitally accepting it and agreeing upon it. Um, bodes extremely well for her consumer confidence and also is going to really help uh, the dealerships. Um, repayment. Now, repayment is a very interesting one because um, I've always talked about how blockchain technology um, is going to give a lot of power to the dealerships and the automakers. And what I mean by that is you are going to be incentivized someday um, with a better rate if you basically sign up for this special program that runs on a blockchain. The idea is is that um, if you don't make a payment or you you know you you go three months late or something like that, that digitally your contract executes that no payment was made. Immediately your car is registered to a new owner essentially you know they take back ownership instantly um and your keys no longer work the car no longer starts it just sits there and it waits it waits for someone to come and get it because you can't drive it you didn't you missed your payments it's over it's gone no one has to try to go around repoing cars anymore the, the repo industry will be dead um, eventually because of blockchain, because people are going to know exactly where the car ought, car is, and you aren't going to be able to do anything about it. So it'll be interesting. I guess, uh, if anything, when they come to tow it, um, you know, people may put up a fight, <laughs> but there's really nothing that can be done. Right. So it'll be very, very interesting. Um, you know, with smart cars and cars that drive themselves, maybe your car just drives away. It just like peace out. You didn't pay for me, so who knows? That could be in our future. I mean, that's twenty, thirty years from now. But um, pretty crazy fantasy land to think about right now. 
but uh, could happen sooner than we think. So, very, very big company, you know, making big strides. I've, I've mentioned Porsche recently, now Mercedes. Um, I'm very fascinated by luxury brands that are doing this. You know, I, I keep imagining in my mind that, you know, I, I'd like to think that, you know, how innovative some of the car brands coming out of Japan and China are and how familiar they are with this kind of stuff. I would have always imagined it be like a Toyota or a Honda, and maybe they are working on it, right? But I, I, um, I haven't seen anything. But I, I will definitely go and start looking more into it because I think that um, blockchain application for the auto industry uh, makes a ton of sense because it's going to cut out a lot of middleman um, activities and work, and it's going to drive up their margins. Um, and it's also going to allow some car companies to actually offer lower pricing on cars and have a competitive edge because they're able to reduce those costs. So it'll be very interesting to see what the car industry is like in a few years. We already have this trend going on where people just don't like buying new cars as much as they used to. People are much smarter now with their money. There's a lot more clarity around the way that loans work because of um, the financial crisis. So things are just completely different in the car industry now and people are turned off by cars in general and the whole concept of uh, being in debt for a car um, we also live in a new generation especially here in america where the next generation doesn't like to get locked down they like to be able to travel the world really easily be able to just uh at a drop of the hat be like peace out so they don't like long-term commitment they don't like buying houses they don't like buying cars they just want to be able to go on a moment's notice I mean, I know a few people have done that in my personal life. I know uh, one one woman who just dropped what she was doing and went to Thailand like it was no big deal with nothing but a backpack. Everything she owned in her life was in a backpack. Um, it blew my mind. And then I have some other friends that, that, you know, they moved to New Zealand and it was just no big deal to them. Um, just dropped everything and left. Um, and that's just kind of how the next generation is. They're just not really attached to anything and this, and this world is becoming so small. Um, it's just, it's just really, really different, uh, the way things are headed for the car industry and, um, you know, anonymous cars and things like that require blockchain technology. And I'm really excited about, it. I'm really excited about, um, only paying for a car when I use it, it always being a nice car, <laughs> ideally. Um, I believe I, I, uh, read an article that Toyota was doing something with anonymous cars. It wasn't blockchain related, but they're but they're contemplating the idea of doing a test city and initially having a fleet of cars that are all anonymous and anyone can basically go and rent those cars. Um, it's the same way you'd call an Uber and said you reserve your car and when you get there, you get in and you go. Um, if you go to the store, uh, it's still reserved and waiting for you in the parking lot while you're inside. You come back out. And there are some apps out there that are already doing this, something that's similar to this, but none of them are applying blockchain technology. None of them are um, essentially making it so that it's like you're only insured for the small amount of time that you use it, right? Because that would be the ideal. I only want to pay insurance for when I drive and for how many miles I drive. I shouldn't have to pay a ridiculous amount of insurance Um just because the you know you know uh, it's this industry standard price right um, if I, I only drive like a few miles to work I shouldn't have to pay as much as everyone else I also have a very safe commute through schools where I'm doing like 20 miles an hour I shouldn't have to pay as much as everyone else um, and uh, blockchain technology is going to give a lot more transparency to uh, everything from uh, from the price of insurance to uh, how I commute and things like that. It's all going to be connected. It's all going to be connected in a transparent way. So um, I'll actually be able to go on the blockchain and essentially see other people's transactions someday in a far future world where, you know, the blockchain is transparent enough and it makes enough sense that you can actually start running queries on it like that. And you're literally querying, okay, who... Um, Who's like me out there and what are they paying, right? Um, and it's going to be real fascinating to be able to do that and to be able to identify if I'm overpaying or underpaying or where I fall into the mix. Um, and that, again, is, a real, is, is really far away, but it could be sooner than we think because the technology does exist. Uh, we just need a lot more developers. We need developers so bad to start making this stuff happen faster. I think that 
um, because of the huge uprun in in uh, in price in the market. There's a lot of devs who are stepping away because it's like they made it. There's a lot of very smart people. Let's be real. The smartest people in the world are in this stuff, right? You guys are super smart. Um, and people who have been in this for years are super smart. And a lot of them are super wealthy. And they're like, well, I'm done with that. I'm wealthy now. So we do have a lot of um, people exiting. But we have so many amazing people entering right now. And it's it's just it just takes some time to for those people to really gain traction, start contributing to the ecosystem and um it won't be long before we really have another ramp up again and the next one truly could be a monumental one um i still believe we can hit a trillion uh by the end of 2018 so that's 18 months guys um that's crazy so i believe in that i believe it can happen i don't know if it will but i believe it can like it's a plausible thing I think August 1st will have a big piece to do with it if it goes off without a hitch. I literally have had people tell me to my face, not just in Reddit and stuff. People I know literally say, I'm waiting for August 1st. If things go well, I'm going to basically go all in, uh, you know, and I'm like, wow, that's interesting. So there is a, a lot of uncertainty right now. And even though we have a green day and things look up, um, many people uh, may call this a, a trap, and you've heard you if you're familiar with the markets, you've heard these uh, terms before. And um, I don't know what to predict. I just know that things are kind of crazy, and I hope uh, everyone is doing all right out there, and you survived the crazy roller coaster ride. But don't forget this roller coaster ride because tomorrow we could all be down 30% again and the next day be up 50 and the next day down 100 so just um just hang in there and uh don't don't overreact don't get too crazy um, but at the same time set your stop losses um, i know i know that a lot of people don't do that but when the market drops you want to get out you want to get out of the way and um if you're if you're an active trader now if you're a holder um I hope you're doing your homework. I hope you're doing your research before you invest. I really hope you aren't just randomly taking people's advice online. Do your own homework. This is your money. You need to decide what is a long-term investment. Um, this last dip really tested what I believe in, and I really have reevaluated what I really, really want to hold through this dip. And... Um, but many things, uh, I'm, I'm, I was able to get on the cheap and things like that. And so that, that ended up being a win. But um, it really, really tested what I truly believe in. And uh, maybe this last dip did for you and you've learned something about yourself and what you truly believe about blockchain technology. And, um, you know, and there may be more dips in the future and you may learn more about yourself. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. So we haven't really recovered we don't know if this is um, just a correction or a full-on pullback yet. It's too early to say. These things take a little time to really sort themselves out. But I tell you, the volatility is just ridiculous right now. Like when you see $50 up and $50 down and $50 up and $100 down and $50 up and $25 down. You know, like it's happening so fast. Um, every time I look at my phone, I'm like, is this right? That can't be right. So it's weird too because I don't really feel like the the volume is there to match, uh, but it's it's just very very volatile right now. But that being said, um, you know things are kind of looking up and up. So one last piece of news before you go. Nim back in the news, back in the news with Nim Nim I O Foundation essentially. They're doing a $40 million global expansion, and one of the things that they're going to be doing, let me bring it up for you, uh, one of the things that they're going to be doing is essentially um, creating kind of like this uh, facility, this uh, innovative lab, a place where people can come together and work on NIM. Uh, they want to create an incubator for NIM, a, an accelerator of sorts to try to uh, help give support to the developers who, who want to use it who are interested in the infrastructure and the platform. So 
Very fascinating. So $5 million of that um, is going straight into um, companies, essentially, to be incubated as well. So um, now it, they do say that it is a global expansion, but we don't exactly know what else they're doing. Be on the lookout for um, some more locations around the world. Maybe we'll get one in the U.S., uh, which would be fascinating. Just really encourage some development over here. But um, keep an eye on NIM, guys. Uh, one thing I always like to do, let me give you a little trick about NIM. If you go to NIM.io, something that I do is I actually have an Excel file that I actually track this. But you scroll down here and you can actually see the number of full nodes online. A node um, takes uh, 10,000 NIM to create. And, it's just, and basically you can see right here that there's 650 uh, nodes out there. So that that may not be individuals. Let me be clear on that. You, I can actually have more than one node if I want to, but um, ten thousand is a node. Now, if you don't uh, have a node and you have ten thousand NIM, you really need to start harvesting it. You need to basically get that node going. Make sure you do that. If you have it sitting on an exchange, there's no reason for it to be there. First of all, for security purposes. Um, so get it out into a NIM wallet and uh, create your node and um, get rolling. Uh, you'll actually earn some free NIM. Uh, right now, um, it's pretty slow goings. If you only have 10,000 NIM, you're not going to harvest very often, maybe once or twice a month. And oftentimes, your block may be empty. You may get nothing. But um, at the end of the day, if you're long on NIM, if you're a believer in what they're doing, um, that's the best place to keep it. So um, I know a lot of you are, are pretty well diversified and sometimes I run into it pretty often that the people who are really well diversified don't take the time because it is a lot of work to get all the wallets set up and everything. But um, there are benefits to keeping them in some wallets, essentially staking them in some wallets. So um, make sure you guys are doing that, uh, especially if you're in it for the long haul because you're basically going to just increase uh, your gains in the long run. So, all right. And that is it for me. I am the King of Dew, and I really hope you guys appreciated this episode. I uh, just tried to do something a little bit different, kind of went off topic a little bit with uh, the Daimler situation, talking about the automotives. But, you know, my goal is to bring you guys news. Um, there wasn't too much crazy news today. Um, pretty, pretty calm day, but a good recovery day as well. And, um, I just want to say thank you uh, in particular to a few people, um, even though I don't know who you are. Uh, I've gotten some very interesting donations as of late, and it's really wanted to just say thank you to those people, um, whoever you are. Um, I also just want to thank everyone for that's been using the links and things like that. Um, it really helps a lot, uh, more than you know. And um, uh, besides that, uh, we did it. We hit 2,000. And I, I need to do some type of celebration. I was thinking about scheduling a live stream so you guys like know what time it's gonna be at, and uh, we can all like plan on it and make sure everyone's there, etc. So um, be looking for news on that. Um, I think that we can go ahead and uh, just plan on that being this weekend. We'll try to go ahead and uh, schedule a nice ask me anything. Uh, we'll have some good talk. We'll talk about some cryptocurrencies. It'll just kind of be open discussion. Last time I did that, um, it was like one of the most mind-blowing, mind-opening hours of uh, my crypto life because you guys taught me so much. You guys brought so much to the table. You guys were like, hey, have you seen this? This is really cool. Head over here. Go there. And it's just every time we do that, it's great. So hopefully you guys will show up for that. So be looking for that this upcoming weekend. Um, and uh, at the end of this video, you can also check out some other videos. Make sure you do that as well. Um, and uh, there, there's always a link at the end of the most recent video so you can go back and watch. So, But uh, hey, guys, that's it. I am the king of do. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and um, man, thank you so much. Thank you so much again for hitting 2,000, guys. This is blowing my mind. You guys are the best. Really appreciate it very, very much, and uh, really enjoy bringing you guys the news. So um, I will see you all tomorrow, all right? I'm the King of Dew. May the Force be with you.